On December 5, 2012, Bill C-45 was passed in the Canadian House of Commons. Along with other sweeping changes, the new law altered how land is managed on native reserves and removed protection of thousands of bodies of water. As the country's indigenous peoples learned about the new law, they began to assemble, and a movement was born. Stand up and raise your fist. We are the soul of the country, the reason it exists. Idle breeds evil, the people are not feeble. At the bottom of the pot is where they try to keep you. False information is what they gon' try to feed you. Keep telling us we're stupid, say they don't need you. It's said the burning flames is where they try to lead you. Open up your eyes, Harper's lies are so see Every generation has its time, and every generation has its leaders and every generation has its heroes. Every generation has all of that. My name is Caitlin Tolley and I am an elected band counselor from the community of Kitagon CB. I am currently a part-time student studying here at the University of Ottawa in the political studies department. I still face many challenges um, including a lot of um, racism within the town of Manawaki, issues um, that I was seeing growing up within the community that are affecting us today like uh, violence against women, um, seeing the community, some community members go through poverty, so it's a range of issues. Mm -hmm. Welcome to The Circle everyone on CHO 89.1 FM. I'm your host Joss. And I'm your co-host, Darren Sutherland. My name is Jocelyn Formsma, and I am from the Moose Cree First Nation originally. I uh, grew up in Northern Ontario, and I'm a first-year law student at the Faculty of Law at the University of Ottawa. Aboriginal people in Canada, more than 50% are under the age of 30. A large majority of that are under the age of 25. So we're a young population. We're one of the fastest growing populations in Canada, and we have immense potential to, to provide to Canadian society. Uh, my name is Ryan McMahon. I'm a comedian and a writer based out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm originally from Fort Francis, Ontario, and Kuchiching First Nation. The situation is very complicated, but in general, you could say that uh, in Canada, while we're a very, very wealthy in terms of the, the resource-based economy that we benefit from, the, uh, the indigenous people in Canada don't benefit the same way from it. I ask how many young Canadians have ever had to go to the bathroom in a pail or can't drink water until the evening when the water comes in from some place. Um, those are real things that happen in this country and when you see the wealth that exists, you have to ask why. Canadians have no idea, they don't understand how deeply First Nations have been discriminated against, uh, shoved away, underfunded. Uh, we have systemically uh, made sure that poverty and lack of education and lack of opportunity uh, happens on reserves. There has been over 500 years of colonization and our First Nations people in Canada have endured so much. There are over 100 First Nation communities in Canada that today still do not have clean drinking water. 40% of all First Nation homes are in need of major repairs. It is estimated that there are over 600 Indigenous women that have gone missing or been murdered in Canada within the past 20 years. First Nations people, they're undergoing a health crisis. This is due to extreme poverty and that results in a lower life expectancy. When you say, well, why are they poor? Or why are they complaining about this? Why is it this? Uh, it's not our system. We have our own governance systems that uh, we we've, haven't we've practiced since the uh, uh, formation of the Indian Act and, and uh, 
the colonial and sort of assimilatory nature of, of all of that stuff is, um, is what's in the way. addictions or suicide, oppression, assimilation policies, or any other plans they have for us. This world is changing because we're making a change. When the Idle No More movement started, uh, it started very humbly, and it started with education, and it started with Indigenous women um, stepping forward and saying, we need to do something about what's happening in our communities. Uh, trying to educate people on, on what's actually in the omnibus bill number two, Bill C-45. The idea behind that is being that if people know what's going on, that they're going to be like us and they're not going to like it. I mean, everyone nowadays for I don't know more movements, they just say, oh, I'm going to just keep staying posted on Facebook. I'll just, you know, keep looking at Facebook and someone will invite me to another I don't know more event. It just explodes exploded on social media. Um, people were picking it up all over the place. And this round dance revolution started where people started doing these flash mob round dances in malls. And people were showing up by the thousands. People are literally fighting for their lives. And that's what I Don't Know More is, is the, the people standing up to, uh, to try to call for change sort of once and for all. We can't really have faith in, uh, in the Harper regime. It's sad that we can't have faith in our government. I think it's unfortunate that people see no other avenue than to take to the streets. It speaks to decades of not being heard. Everybody's come out under this title of I Don't Know More, and it really um, is very, very exciting to see. This one's not going away. Uh, this one's not going to be silenced. This one is actually going to be, uh, be here until we fix it. When the settlers came, we, the Algonquin people, never surrendered the land. We agreed to share them. Our ancestors, which means yours and mine, made a sacred agreement that is recorded in wampum belts. When the settler societies came over here, we welcomed them. Canada, there was never a war. We never surrendered the land. We shared it. And that's very different. A treaty is an agreement between uh, Aboriginal nations and the Crown, um, British Crown, uh, in terms of how the two parties are going to share territory together. Most of the treaties in, in plain English mean uh, we won't bother you, you don't bother us, and we're here for the benefit of each other. Um, from the federal government's perspective, the treaties have not always been considered at that level. They've been sometimes considered as, as mere promises without any legal meaning. Well, first of all, treaties are rarely ever spoken about in the House of Commons, uh, not, not domestic treaties. But one of the things that it's important to remind Canadians about is, is that we are all treaty people. It's not just First Nations who are treaties. Non-Aboriginal representatives sign those treaties on behalf of non-Aboriginal Canadians. So we are partners in these treaties. Um, today, the courts have determined that the treaties do have binding legal force. And it's a matter of interpretation now as to what are the promises and how can they be uh, translated into contemporary terms. We're roommates. Okay, you and I live in the same place. We share an apartment, okay? Sometimes we share food, sometimes we'll watch TV together, but then you tell me there's rules to how I'm allowed to watch TV and when, what I can eat, how I can eat, but we live together. Uh, the Declaration um, is, a, is a very comprehensive document outlining the minimum state standards uh, that states have to comply with uh, with respect to the rights of indigenous peoples. They're, they're regarded as the minimum human rights that indigenous peoples possess uh, within countries that belong to the United Nations General Assembly. This is not just a First Nations issue, this is a human rights issue when it comes to 
issues such as our poverty, um, protection of the land and water. These are human rights issues that all Canadians should be looking to do something about. The principles outlined in the Declaration, the standards that the Declaration identifies as the minimum human rights standards are much more um, uh, significant than what um, the Canadian state currently recognizes. I don't think most Canadians understand the depth of the poverty in some of these, some of these communities, uh, the depth of despair in some of these communities, right? An ignorant and an uneducated view is that, well, the money's already there, you guys have to choose to do something, but it's not true. Fundamentally, uh, Indigenous people in Canada are legislated too. Right now, the Indian Act governs uh, so many different aspects of uh, First Nations life, whether it's status, uh, whether it's land management. To, to put it very plainly, the, the Indian Act is what legislates all Indians in this country, and you can't escape it, and it's not ours, and you need to understand that because it's what is fundamentally in the way. There's a section in that act that's called the second generation cutoff. And essentially that piece of legislation will ensure that if First Nations continue to marry out of their communities, there will be no status Indians left within a generation or two. Now, that's pretty serious. It was never okay for somebody else to say, this is how you're gonna live. Uh, the fact that there were people physically blocking the only road out of uh, communities to say you can't leave or you will leave now. The fact that there were people put in place, they were called Indian agents, put in place to tell you how to vote, when to vote. You, you can't just unilaterally uh, abolish the Indian Act. There has to be uh, put in place mechanisms that deal with some of those critical relationships between the Canadian government and First Nations governments. So it has to be done very thoughtfully and very carefully. And then, uh, so again, you need that consultation process. The solutions are on the ground. The solutions are with uh, the people that, that uh, are affected every day. And so they have to be heard. This can't come from the top down. Um, this can't come from the PMO's office. This can't come from the government. Uh, we have to be brought to the table in, in good faith and, uh, and the solutions need to be done in tandem. The underpinnings of all of the dissent around Bill C-45 is around the duty to consult. It was a mockery of uh, what any of us would think would be a reasonable approach to legislation that could have such far-ranging uh, consequences. Our government can't unilaterally uh, continue to legislate with respect to Indigenous peoples without meaningful consultation. In the simplest ways, uh, duty to consult means if the government is going to make a decision that is going to affect me, my land, my rights, I need to be included in a conversation about what this means. And it's a constitutional requirement. Um, government can't assume anymore uh, that the status quo is, is acceptable. In the simplest terms, you're going to affect me, you need to talk to me. The land where it's baked and picked on strawberries, peanuts, those kinds of things, it's gone. There's lots of uh, devastation on the land. And that's a direct assault on the woman's spirit. Our land is who we are. What we're saying is that the land is so tied to us as Indigenous peoples, uh, religiously or spiritually, that uh, when those things are taken from us, we need to stand up and we need to say, that's so closely tied to who I am as an Anishinaabe person, I can't let you have it. But my, my great-great-grandmother lived off the land. My great-grandmother was part of the generation that um, was forced to move uh, onto the reserve, and not be nomadic anymore. And if you could understand the analogy of somebody taking your god, that's what I mean when I say you can't have my land. What I'm actually saying is you can't have my God. If you look at a tree, if you look at the animals, if you look at the plants, if you look at the species, as the original people, we are one and the same as them. Whatever happens to the species, whatever happens to the plants, whatever happens to the water, happens to the indigenous people. 
I believe that um, the Idle No More movement calls on all people to join in a revolution which honors um, not only indigenous sovereignty but also uh, protects the land and waters. With the recent bills that are coming down, Bill C-45 and others by this state, by this government, that affects all of us. So we're seeing a, a huge, huge amount of support from uh, non-indigenous people. Water, air, and the, tr and the land, the trees, that's what keeps us alive. So why are we willing to sell that? to China? Why are we willing to get rid of environmental protections? Why are we willing to put our lakes and rivers on the line just for, just in the name of development? Um, development for who is, uh, is the question. And what I ask Canadians and what I ask young people to ask themselves all the time is, at what cost? All of us need land, resources, water. Right now, the government of Canada, Harper, is trying to take that away from us. But I'm making a statement to Harper today. If you want our lands, our native land, over my dead body, Harper, you're going to take it. To me, it was clear that I was never in the vision uh, that this government had for, for Canada. Our people are literally fighting for their lives, literally. And we're just asking for people to understand that, um, that there are answers. It's not like there aren't any answers. I'm not a leader of tomorrow, I'm a leader of today. I am a young leader and I want to make the change today. I want to make the difference today. The relationship is real. The history of this relationship is real and it's broken and it needs to be looked at and I think that's the, the opportunity Idol No More gives. I've just seen incredible hope, um, but not, not idle hope. Uh, not hope that just sits back and waits for something to happen. Today I speak on behalf of all First Nations young people um, from across this country who are asking for equality in Canada. Uh, we just want to have control over our own lives and that should be that should be exciting for Canadians. For anybody who's questioning it, find out more about it and, and join us on this journey and, and find your voice. Everybody can find a piece of themselves under this Idol No More banner. Continue on our journey to equality and justice, and I ask you, Mr. Harper, and every Canadian here, to join us on our journey. Because I firmly believe in the power of our peoples, and we can do this. Kitchen Miigwech. Every generation has its time, and every generation has its leaders, and every generation has its heroes. Every generation has all of that. I don't know more, let your heart soar. Voice of the people, hear the nation roar. Always trying to work and get set for tomorrow. But when the women lead, yes, a man must follow. All are important as Mother Earth kids. But none are more important than the Mother Earth is. Equality for all, none above or beneath. Uh, praise the Most High and the Mother Teresa. will be great. Great, great, great changes, changes. It's not negative.